Yugoslavia, which it was thought would adopt a democracy with the least upset, began to collapse in mid-1991, metastasizing from internal aggression. The until recently joint Yugoslav People's Army, or JNA, attacked Slovenia, Croatia, and then Bosnia and Herzegovina. The magnitude of the crime of the so-called JNA, even then already serving the Serb cause, was growing with the direction of its withdrawal. Many reasons of history, sense, and future spoke in favor of preserving this land whole. When Tito died, the suppressed nationalism broke out. The biggest was the most arrogant one, the most powerful one, because it took over all the authorities. The communist officials who had built their careers by suppressing all that was thought to be have national identity, changed their ideology in the new order like chameleons and became passionate supporters of the heavenly mission of their own people. The crime of murdering Yugoslavia touched rock bottom here. The country was murdered from its top. One, bitke se ne mogu dobiti bez odlučnosti, hrabrosti i požrtvovanosti, bez tih dobrih osobina koje su onda davno bile prisutne na polju Kosovu. The threat was systematically implemented. The political, intellectual and religious leadership of Serbia mercilessly introduced methods of institutionalized violence into the social life of Yugoslavia. In most cases, the interests of other peoples were brutally ignored. Such acts inevitably pushed the national community into bloodshed. A very clear prospect of catastrophe was present in Bosnia and Herzegovina, a center of coexistence of different nationalities and religions for centuries. In the European atmosphere of a single nation and a non-sectarian spirit, Bosnia had been a jewel of differences and fertile pluralism for ages. Those distinctive features some people could not understand, others tended to destroy. Most Bosnians and Herzegovinians wanted to preserve the life together that had been built through centuries knowing that expelling people from their homes would lead to an unimaginable tragedy. The leadership of Bosnia and Herzegovina had followed the wishes of its people. It had supported the idea of democracy in Yugoslavia, of consensus, the highest human rights standards and an economy of open markets. The Izetbegovic Gligorov plan was the last democratic attempt to preserve the national community upon a basis of equality of all the constituent republics and sovereignty of the peoples within them. However, those who commanded the army decided to lead the country by a dictatorship. They began to force Slovenia out of the common state borders. Slovenia was already ethnically independent and did not allow itself to become Serbian. The rest of the country was to have been reshaped by tanks along the line of the idea of the so-called Great Serbia. For centuries dreamt about that would have been a dungeon for the rest of the people. The National Socialist Program showed intolerance toward all that was different. 
Its actors had perceived the very idea of equality and sovereignty within a common country as an insult. Ovo nije dobro što vi radite. Ovo je put na koji vi hoćete da izvedete Bosnu i Hercegovinu. Ista ona autostrada, pakla i stradanja kojom su pošli Slovenija i Hrvatska. Nemojte da mislite da nećete odvesti Bosnu i Hercegovinu u pakao, a muslimanski narod možda u nestanak. Jer muslimanski narod ne može da se odbrani ako bude rat ovdje. Kako ćete vi spriječiti da svak svakoga ne ubija u Bosni i Hercegovini? Kako se može spriječiti rat u Hrvatskoj, pogotovo tamo u rubnim krajima gdje su na dodiru Srbiji i Hrvati? Vi ovdje hoćete da u Evropi isposlujete nešto na šta nemate pravo. Dobro, ipak potrebno je da nastupim odmah i za izlaganje gospodina Karadžića. Naime, njegovo izlaganje, njegovi, njegov način izlaganja, njegove poruke, možda na najbolji način objašnjavaju zašto mi i možda nećemo više da ostanemo u Jugoslaviji. To već raz govorim ovdje. I još nešto. Još nešto. Njegov način, njegove poruke možda objašnjavaju zašto i drugi neće da ostanu u toj Jugoslaviji. Takvu Jugoslaviju kakvu hoće gospodin Karadžić više niko neće. Neće više niko možda osim srpskog naroda. Takvu Jugoslaviju su u očima jugoslovenskih naroda. Slovenaca, Hrvata, Makedonaca, Albanaca, Mađara, Muslimana. Jednostavno omrzli u očima Evrope i svijeta, takvi načini kako to Karadžić radi. Međutim, jer Karadžić je samo izraz jednog načina, mišljenja jednog pristupa, mi smo se sve nadali i nadamo se i dalje da će proraditi, da se naša nada, da će srpski narod doći do svoje demokratske tradicije, da će srpski narod otkriti one zalihe demokratske tradicije koje imaju i koje ga odlikuju, po kome je bio poznat u svijetu. Ovo što se radi danas, ovo ne služi na čast srpskog narodu, ni ovaj način istupanja, ove prijetnje koje se iskazuju. Muslimanski narod neće nestati. To ja poručujem gospodinu Karadžiću. Serb envoys left the parliament without being able to find any reason for bringing BH to the level of constitutional equality with other federal units in Yugoslavia. Pretending to support the idea of a common country, Karadzic and his Social Democratic Party were practically just buying time for a forced annexation of BH to the so-called Great Serbia. The discussion on the independence of BH was held in October 1991, but the Social Democratic Party had already announced the so-called Serb Autonomous Districts in May 1991, thus suspending the legitimacy of the BH country and throwing away its laws. These shots, taken secretly, show how they turned the clock 50 years backwards. Fascism and the ideology of the Chetnik's knife had risen again in the Serb autonomous districts. The final preparations for the mass killings of Bosniaks were in progress. They were identifying locations for concentration camps and the largest mass rapes of women in history formulated as a war aim. There was no doubt as to what would have been the destiny of non-Serbs in the potentially Serb-led Bosnia and Herzegovina. That's why the referendum was a reasonable decision. Anxious citizens requested it from their parliamentarians. Though held in a hurry, lacking adequate preparations, in an atmosphere of threats and obstructions by Serb nationalists, the referendum has manifested the will of the majority to live in peace and equality for all. International observers confirm the full regularity of the referendum. The percentage of people who have vo voted for democracy was unusually high. 
More than 98% of the voters voted for the independence and the sovereignty of Bosnia and Herzegovina. The citizens didn't have time to express their happiness with this fatefully precious achievement. Furious because of the majority disobedience, the Serbian Social Democratic Party, on March the 1st, 1992, filled the streets with its followers who blocked all the exits and paralyzed life in the city. These sockheads, as people used to call them satirically, were a part of the headquarters terrorist plan to attack the constitutional order of the country. Bosnia and Herzegovina was about to face days, months, and years of untold suffering and destruction. At the beginning of 1992, Bosnia was the country with the greatest concentration of arms across the planet. Four corps were stationed here, equipped with powerful weapons and modern combat systems. During the aggression, the units of five more corps of the Yugoslav National Army attacked Bosnia. With the paramilitary formation of the SDS and Chetniks units from Serbia and Montenegro, the aggressor's power increased up to 200,000 people. Induced by the hatred towards all that was non-Serb, the unwanted armada in Bosnia had available over 1,000 tanks, several hundred armored vehicles, 3,500 of artillery pieces, and inexhaustible resources of guns and ammunition. Its sick leadership mentally prepared the army for committing crimes unprecedented in this century, within the last thousand years of its history. The advantage of the aggressor was not only in his powerful war machinery, but also in his international allies from the United Nations Security Council, which managed to impose the arms embargo. The ban on arms selling on the territory of former Yugoslavia was practically applied only to the army of Bosnia and Herzegovina. That was obviously the goal of the traders behind the stage. Three of five Western forces justified the ban, saying that more arms in Bosnia would have automatically meant a more fierce war. In such a switch of theses, the meanings of unarmed people and peace were mixed, which helped the aggression and the genocide to progress. Naturally, defenseless people are always seen as a victim in every conflict. The political leadership of Bosnia and Herzegovina wrote to all relevant addresses and knocked on all important doors in the world in order to collect crumbs of justice for its people. In vain, even the appeal for lifting the embargo on arms in Bosnia and Herzegovina on a limited scale for a limited amount of defensive arms was not accepted. Atrocities committed by the aggressor in Bielina, Zvornik, Bratunac, Visegrad, Foča, Vlasenica, Prijedor, Kozarac, Brčko, Sarajevo, Gatsko, Trebinje, and all over Bosnia and Herzegovina daily mobilized thousands of defenders. The resistance to the aggression was not the result of an ad hoc decision. As early as June 1990, at a pre-election rally of the Party of Democratic Action in Velika Kladusha, all enemies of Bosnia and Herzegovina were sent the message that all Bosniaks, if attacked, would defend their country together with all other peoples. A year later, ten months before the aggression, the Party of Democratic Action formed the National Defense Council in the police headquarters in Sarajevo, together with 380 representatives from across Yugoslavia.
Following this commitment, the first advisory meeting of the BH Patriotic League was held in Hrasnica in September 1991. In an atmosphere of approaching war, the Patriotic Forces started to organize the defense system. Groups of volunteers were secretly formed who became frontliners when the aggression started. That youth, devoted to freedom, was mostly unarmed. However, these wonderful young men and women were led by love toward Bosnia, so that even the modest weapons in their hands gave hope to defenseless citizens. Thus, the army of the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina was born. At first, the army was limited to collecting weapons when winning battles against the aggressor. At the same time, various companies and private entrepreneurs were organizing their own weapons production in factories and handicraft shops on liberated territory. The enthusiasm, the speed and the inventive spirit marked the existence of a movement during the aggression where engineers and mechanics turned civilian production lines into the war front line production within several weeks, making grenades, bombs, ammunition, infantry weapons and combat system components. Defense is not only a matter of weapons, but also a matter of motive. Ordinary people were determined to go for it because they were most needed here and most devoted to Bosnia. Aware of people's unpreparedness for war compared to the dominant aggressor, almost everyone around the world, as well as some in Bosnia, thought resistance would be equal to suicide. But history was here enriched with one more lesson, showing that the power of people cannot be measured with iron, because the homeland is a matter of heart. Her sons do not defend it because of its strength and wealth, but because it is their mother. Bosnian people never knew how much they loved their country until nowadays, nor had Bosnia ever before remembered such a loyal, courageous and strong generation, the generation that filled the aggressor with horror and the world with wonder. A very popular song says that the smell of lilies was spreading throughout Bosnia in those days. The feeling of freedom was growing among people. The aggressor's idea of a blitzkrieg faded away like an artificial fog. The planners of the SDS and the JNA strongly believed that Bosnia would capitulate within two or three weeks. However, something totally different happened. People were rising spontaneously like an ocean high tide. The aggressor attacked every little part of their defense. Despite that, there were always more people than weapons available. A large portion of the country was occupied, but the Bosnian man didn't want to surrender. Outlawed members of the JNA were given resistance by the units of the Territorial Defense, the Internal Affairs Ministry, the Patriotic League, the Green Berets, Bosnia, and the Sons of Bosnia. The world began to hear about the heroism of people only sporadically observed in the beginning. Some names, unknown before, began to be whispered and sang about in city streets, the countryside and the mountains. Ramiz Salchin, Mustafa Hairullahovic Talian, Mihailo Petrovic, Abba, Fadila Ojakovic, Žuta, Vinko Samarlić, Dragan Vikić, Kemo Ademović, Yuka, Mutevelija, Čelo, Topa, Doktor, Senad Gino, Miralem Jugo, Lovac, Senad Bolić Bolo, Fata Turkušić, Muderiz, Čedomir Domus, Igor Pavlović, Hamdija Avdić Digar, Mirsa Crnkić, Rifat Kobrđa, 
Enver Pamukčić, Zajim Imamović, Čaruga, Havarija, Jupi, Žabac, Čupo. In the night between the 1st and 2nd of May in 1992, perhaps only children slept peacefully. Adults were terrified by the threat of the worst. Actually, the day before, on Friday, May the 1st, at the Sarajevo airport, the JNA had kidnapped the president of the BH presidency. Together with the escort that included the vice president of the Republican government, he was captured in, in a barracks. It was a classical coup aimed at overtaking the rule of, in the country and establishing a quizzing government in order to annex Bosnia and Herzegovina to what was left of Yugoslavia. For avoiding that ominous plan, we should thank a coincidental telephone conversation, which was covered by the television of Bosnia and Herzegovina in its central news program. Under the pressure of the local public and afraid of international reaction, the Yugoslav army had to release the president of the BH presidency. However, it did not give up the second part of the plan, which was to capture the head offices of the government and the presidency and to lay siege to the old part of the city, traditionally inhabited by Bosniaks. The patriots prevented that from happening, realizing that despite brutal destruction, they couldn't besiege the city. The JNA and Karadzic's Serbs totally burned down the central post office building in Bosnia and Herzegovina, thus cutting all the links of Sarajevo with the outside world. In the miracle of Bosnian survival and newly gained freedom, the biggest credit goes to ordinary fighters, those unnamed heroes of the most horrible part of this century's history. In the capacity of Supreme Commander, the BH Presidency called upon the Yugoslav army members originating from Bosnia to join in the defense. The intention was to minimize the death and wounding of soldiers. At the same time, it was an important basis to give the defense a professional quality, as well as to coordinate and connect troops within the country. Colonel Hassan Efendic was the head of the territorial defense headquarters at the state level. After forming the army of Bosnia and Herzegovina, the BH presidency appointed Sefer Halilovic the chief of staff. The presidency also introduced the position of the commander-in-chief and appointed Rasim Delic the supreme commander on June the 8th, 1993. After the first brigades, they started to form operational groups and corps. In some parts of the front line, they also formed divisions. A new and a glorious army was about to come into being in Europe, in the midst of war. There is a saying dating from the Middle Ages about the fact how Bosnia had allegedly fallen quietly. Even if it had happened then, this time there wasn't the slightest hint it would happen again. On the contrary, the resistance of Bosnia was heard up to the skies. Dobro ste naoružani. Sledeća popuna municija municijom kočetnika. Je li jasno? E. From every battle, the army came out stronger. It captured the aggressor's war machinery and the aggressor had increasing human losses. On the territory, which was defended by the BH army, the relation of human losses was 90 to 10. The aggressor's fighters were killed mostly on the front line.
The Bosnian soldier never attacked civilians. He was motivated by freedom, not by revenge. The aggressor attacked mostly civilian areas from far away, out of reach of our weapons. Until the aggression against Bosnia and Herzegovina, the history of wars had never remembered that an army had included within its targets maternity hospitals, hospitals, schools, orphanages, mosques, churches, even cemeteries. Nowhere no army had attacked men, women and children standing in queues for bread, water and medicine. Nowhere no one had ever before hired professional killers to kill all that moves within cities under siege. The front line of resistance, where it was a feat to survive, doctors showed special devotion, as well as nurses, technicians and ambulance drivers. Post-war expert analyses showed that wound healing procedures in the war medicine were performed at the highest professional level, and that the medical knowledge in this area was enriched by the Bosnian experience. In one of his first reports, the UN Special Envoy on Human Rights for the territory of ex Yugoslavia made the comment that the aggressor had included civilian areas in his primary war aims. As it was later confirmed at various international symposia and scientific conferences, they wanted to kill the unity and multicultural society by committing crimes against the essence of the historic being of Bosnia. Until April 1991, Bosniaks and Serbs inhabited 95% of the territory of Bosnia and Herzegovina, while Croats were indigenous on seven-tenths of the country's territory. That picture of life couldn't have been changed otherwise but with crime. The ethnic engineering created in the Serbian brain was aimed at the forced erasing of the organic populations into lace, as well as at forming single nation enclaves. Nearly two million people were forced out of their homes. It was a surgery as painful as a skeleton modification of a living being, but without anesthetics. When the geography of Bosnia was a target of a common plan of a sick nationalism on one side and a morbid one on the other, Bosnians confronted another wave of aggression at the edge of survival. They have survived only thanks to the fight and the army that had risen out of the strength and the virtue of its people. There was a special script for the siege of each city. Tuzla was allocated the destiny of Podrinje on May the 15th, 1992. 
The JNA troops, together with the reservists from Serbia and Montenegro, pretending to leave the city, had actually intended to surround it and after that force its defenders to surrender by a perfidious artillery attack. The aggressor was so confident about his weapons then that he announced the celebration of Serbian municipality of Tuzla to take place the next day, on Saturday, May the 16th, 1992. They had also issued invitations with gold stamping for that purpose. However, Tuzla's defenders stopped and destroyed the heavily armed Chetnik's attackers in the part of the town called Bečko Tollgate. On that day, Tuzla deserved its freedom and succeeded in defending Bosnia. In Zenica, all activities were aimed at easing difficult war conditions in places where the aggression had a much stronger impact. From here, from the heart of Bosnia, all actions were coordinated in order to maintain and extend the liberated territory. The results of such attempts were especially visible in Bugojno and Novi Travnik. Sometimes, heroic moves can be recognized only by a coincidental event. That is the case of the Pofalici battle on May the 16th, 1992, which had seemed like an incidental fire exchange with the SDS terrorists. But later, it was realized that it had actually sealed the destiny of the liberation war. If the defenders hadn't started their action at 6 a.m. that day, 7 a.m. would have been too late for Bosnia and Herzegovina. That is to say, the aggressor had planned the same morning, but an hour later, to cut Sarajevo along the line Lukavica, Grbavica, Pofalici, Žuč, Vogošća. Within such a circle, Sarajevans wouldn't have been able to survive the siege for three, not to mention 43 months. Even the highest tree cannot touch the skies. While Sarajevo was tearing apart the chain from its neck with the Pofalici battle, other hard battles were fought throughout Bosnia-Herzegovina. Kalesia, Bradina, Unagrad, Zvornik, Dobrinja, Trnovo Gorazde, Gradačac, Jajce, Gornji Vakuf, Travnik, Zavidovići, Konjević Polje, Cerska, Srebrenica, Žepa. The breakthrough from the east towards the marked borders of the phantom Great Serbia involved the aggressor's attacks focused on every bit of the resistance. All of a small town surrounded by high mountains was also included in this focus. Planes, tanks, the biggest caliber artillery of Chetniks fired at the town, together with professional killers from eastern countries. The aggressor was losing the battle, but he didn't move away a bit. The victims of all of our defenders had saved and made Bosnia glorious. Until the aggression, most Sarajevans had never heard of Druj before, a big hill dominating the city from the northwest. When the Serb aggressor was forced out of there on June the 8th, 1992, the citizens of Sarajevo had realized that every part of the town had been controlled from Druj. The aggressor used to fire up to 500 modern shells on the defenders every day. However, Zhuch couldn't stand the aggressor's repression. Teočak, a small town on the northeast of Bosnia, was a thorn in the side of Chetniks. The defense forces were firmly grounded on the banks of the Drina, the alleged backbone of the Serb cause. The specially planned operation in the Belgrade headquarters, called Hammer and Forge, tells how difficult it was for Serbs to break through the defense of Teočak, where they wanted to destroy the center of Bosnian strength. But all Chetnik's attacks were doomed to fail. The mouth of the Usura River, March the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 1993, Powerful armored vehicles were heading to the defenders' positions. 
The result of a three-day battle confirmed the well-known sentence. It is a historic rule that all wars of liberation are always won. Prije par sati četnici bili sa pet tenkova i sa šest poklopnih transportera. Vi ćete vidjeti šta je ostalo još tu. Da, to je ušće usuri u Bosnu. Jest, 500 metara više ušće usuri u Bosnu. A 800 metara od grada do boje. Mostar, the beginning of summer 1993. It is a wonder how people managed to survive here between two offensive armies in ruins of the town surrounded by the Herzegovinian rocky ground without food, medicine and ammunition. Since the enemy had visually controlled every corner of the enclave, the curfew was introduced during the daytime too, probably the only one such case in history. The citizens of Mostar and thousands of refugees from eastern Herzegovina would leave their shelters only when night fell, where the darkness of the city without electric power protected them from the aggressor's artillery, fire and snipers. A film made by foreign reporters shows a part of that atmosphere. At nightfall on June the 30th, 1993, the defenders decided to break through along the line Severny Logor Bielopolje Grabovica to connect with the liberated Jablanica. The courage was rewarded here as well. The success could be reached only by fighting. Indeed, after pain, always comes relief. From one battle to another, our army was growing in number and developing in the organizational sense. Its attacks started to break apart the technically superior enemy forces and to strengthen its positions. In the meantime, the army had built the logistics, which had, in only two last years of the war, managed to provide more than 75,000 guns, 100 million bullets, 50,000 bomb shells, and a large amount of anti-armored vehicle weapons, which had stopped the enemy's offenses and destroyed its tanks. All that and more was provided thanks to the courage and persistency of many people, obstructed by numerous blockades and embargoes, and as Mr. Izerbegovic once said, across seven seas and seven mountains. Without those weapons, the defense could have failed and the war could have taken a completely different course. The aggressor had withdrawn to the peaceful Posovina, 54 tanks wanting to run down the defender's position. In vain. A long time ago, it was said that victory is not won by the number of soldiers and weapons. The army with the strongest heart always wins the battle. The cities of Gradachac, Omerbegovacha, Izdarusha thus became symbols of the invincibility of the army of the BH Republic. The persistency of the Gorazhbe defenders deserved special respect. The town, which couldn't be broken by lacks of everything within, or by a hermetic siege. In May 1994, the Second Corps carried out a counter-offensive under the lyrical name of Spring. Their aim was Vienatz, the aggressor's artillery base, from where he killed and crippled innocent civilians in the region of Tuzla, Lukavac, Banovici and Živinice. The action was started on May the 11th after the Chetniks were tricked by a clever war strategy that there was an offensive to be led on Bozocha. That's why the aggressors' units were totally unprepared when the 2nd Corps units started the attack. 
On that occasion, two enemy battalions were destroyed. Two T-34 tanks were captured, two ZIS-76 cannons, two mortar batteries of 82 and 120 millimeters, four recoilless guns, and tons and tons of various material. The victory at Vienatz announced the progression of the army of the BH Republic. Attacking the aggressor at selected places, the army showed the ability to switch between operative and strategic actions. The example is Bihačka Krajina, where the 5th Corps liberated the Grabež Valley, an important Chetnik base. That success, which was on the edge of reality, was achieved on October the 25th, 1994. <laughs> Treskavica, a mountain that takes away your breath with its beauty and causes horror with its unpredictable nature. The Second Corps ran down the aggressor's machinery on Treskavica on October the 30th and November the 1st and 2nd, 1994, capturing five tanks, four armored vehicles, two B-1 cannons, seven Arrow anti-aircraft systems, 14 mortars, several hundred bombshells of various caliber, and several hundred thousand pieces of ammunition. The action had succeeded without a single human loss. Gospodine predsjedniče, prva tenkovska četa prvog okolnog bataljona postrojena u vaš čas. Jedinica je formirana i splijena što smo uzeli u proteklim borbenim dajstvima. Dragi vojnici, pozdrav domovini. Pozdrav! The liberation successes on the Tsernoriechka plateau proved the fact that even in places where at first sight there is no chance for a victory, a persistent and courageous action can win the hard battle in military trenches. Jedna od udarnih grupa je svoje črti. Izmršili smo probe linije, linijem obuhvatom ove bajte. Pošto nam je LPG zakazao, morao sam partizanski prijeći ono ko u sutest. Privukao sam se, znači, bacio bombu. Neutrali su prvu u četvrcu. Iz druge bajte su uspjela dvojica pobjeći. I onda je nastao pakao, od ovdje je počelo onda da bije s desne strane, tu je ranjen moj dobar prijatelj, sena Šraka, koji mi je spasio život u stvari od ovog jednog međuda, ovog debelog. S njim sam se borio s puškom, uzeo sam za njegovu velu cijev i evo. The commanders and the fighters of the 4th Corps made Herzegovina the center of courage and Bosnian success. Mm. 
nismo znali šta su zornje ose. Jednostavno, kroz rat, on nas je dosta naučio svemu. Pa smo tako da smo pružili vrlo jak otpor agresoru, koji je bio i nadmoćan i dobro naoružan. Ali mislim da nisu imali ono što smo mi imali srca. Evo, Jadam, ti skupe se, daj mi 212. Odbij da ti kažem. Joj, joj, joj! The liberation of Kupres on November the 3rd, 1994, was important for two reasons. As a serious defeat of the Serb aggressor, and as a vow of the BH Republic Army to complete the liberation of the country together with the Croatian Defense Council after the Washington Agreement. The Serb aggressor intended to take over the Bosnian heritage of Gornji Vakov for good. Even changing the name of the town, they wanted to erase everything that was Bosniak and Islamic. Their evil plan was prevented by the 7th Corps troops. Bosni i Hrvatskovne mora biti vojska svih naroda i narodnosti. I da u toj armiji Bosni i Hrvatskovne budu svi ljudi. Svi ljudi koje misle dobro ovoj Bosni i Hrvatskovne. The liberation of Lašić on March 2, 1995 threw a light of hope and pride on the whole of Bosnia. That glorious victory was a result of common operations led by the 7th and the 3rd Corps. What a great military achievement the Vlasic victory was can be seen from the fact that all foreign experts on commando actions had strongly claimed that the Bosnian army didn't have a slightest chance to defeat the enemy, which had entrenched himself into this rocky landscape. When the Bosnian feet stepped onto the heights of Vlasic, the naked eye was able to see from an eagle-eye view the spread of freedom all over Bosnian and Herzegovinian horizons. This was only one in a series of acts of heroism of the 7th Muslim Brigade, which was to win many other battles. The president of the BH Presidency and the BH Commander-in-Chief had visited all the front lines during the Liberation War, including those surrounded by the enemy. The road of the BH army wasn't filled only with victories. The break of the blockade of Sarajevo, which began on June the 15th, 1995, had involved an enormous number of human resources and technical means. But the courage of the fighters, the readiness of all commanders, and the brains of headquarters, and the will of all people together couldn't break through the Chetnik positions. The BH army units had seriously defeated the aggressor several times and had liberated a great deal of the territory, but the road to Sarajevo couldn't have been routed without heavy human losses. That's why the operation was cancelled.
Only after the NATO air forces had torn apart the Chetnik chain around Sarajevo was it realized how powerful were the forces focused on this capital city. The JNA and the Chetniks had built many bunkers there, concrete trenches, headquarters and linkage systems. They had dug in hundreds of cannons, mortars, tanks, armor vehicles, heavy machine guns, snipers, death sowers. The Sarajevo blockade break must not be remembered only as a failure because the aggressor was forced to withdraw most of its troops from other front lines to Sarajevo. Thus were made holes in other Chetniks positions which were successfully used by the BH army forces to courageously attack from inside. Vozucha, September the 10th, 1995. This victory, beyond any expectation, will stay as a memory on connecting two corps previously separated by enemy positions, the second and the third corps. At the same time, the industrial resources of Zenica were connected by the nearest traffic communication. The aggressor thought Vozucha to be theirs and unconquerable. Vidite da se nalazimo u Vozuči. Za Vozuču je Karadžić rekao da se ovdje brani Moskva, a ja sam prije šest mjeseci na to odgovorio tu se ne brani Moskva nego oslobađa Bosna. Vozuča was the proof of the capability of the BH army and its commanders to perform successful military operations. From commander to fighter, from the headquarters to individual departments, the army is a complex of a functional system of governance and command. Not a single action was unimportant to the army, which is liberating its country and valuing the life of its soldier above all. That's why each action was prepared, even for months, at the headquarters, analyzing every little detail. <laughs> I time nismo dozvolili da agresor ostvari dva svoja krajnja cilja, a cilj četnika je bio prvo uništiti muslimanski narod i sve ono što taj narod čini narodom. I u tom pogledu je težio da to uradi u što kraćem vremenu. Dalje etnički potpuno očistiti i preključiti sve teritorije Bosne i Hercegovine zamišljenoj velikoj Srbiji. Iako je već bio okupirao Bosnu i Hercegovinu, praktično je zauzeo, nije ostvario svoje ciljeve. Naš narod je i pored brojnih žrtava sačuvan od uništenja. Naš narod je opstao, veliki dio teritorije u našim rukama. Mi smo jedina armija na terenima Bosne i Hercegovine koja ima šanse da se i dalje razvija i da dalje jača. Within the achievements of Bosnian army, we can also include the contribution of the Air Force and anti-aircraft defense. Let me remind you that more than several thousand wounded persons were transported in 7,000 of their flights across the country, as well as dozens of tons of ammunition, war material and medicines. Under the name Golden Lilies, the Bosnian pilots have also flown to besieged war enclaves of Bihać, Srebrenica, Žepa and Gorazde.
In Krajina, the 5th Corps had to defend the country at three front lines against Karadzicic Serbs, against Martic's Serbs, and against the traitors of Fikret Abdic. All of them were defeated by the Bosnian forces, a unique mixture of Bosnian spirit, Krajina courage, soldiers' companionship, and commanding talent. Ličko Petrovo selo je slobodno, ima dosta zarobljenih četnika, zarobljene tehnike i nadam se popodne ili sutra da ćemo se spojiti sa hrvatskom vojskom. In autumn 1995, in the final act of the war, when the aggressor was brainlessly running away from the 5th Corps units, one could observe a vertical course created by the hearts of Bosnian sons. Bosanski Petrovac, Kluč, Bosanska Krupa, Sanski Most. The liberation of Krajina had shown the capability of the Bosnian army to organize its units at the highest operative level with a high maneuver quality and an irresistible shock troop power. Within only 15 to 20 hours, the Army and the Internal Affairs Ministry units from all over the country, with 12,000 soldiers, arrived in Krajina in mid-September. Getting into action immediately, they gave enormous support to the 5th Corps and speeded up the offensive against enemy's positions. However, a political imperative had stopped this military unstoppable liberation action of the Bosnian army. The path of glory, cleared by the BH army, is edged with battles. If they had never happened, they would have sounded unbelievable even to teachers at military academies. The academic chairs of tactics and operational strategies had taken over the battlefield in Bosnia in the period from 1992 to 1995. The survival of the besieged cities of Sarajevo, Gorazde, Mostar, Gornjevakov, Maglaj, Teshain showed an unprecedented energy of the defenders. The tunnel beneath the Sarajevo airport is the triumph of firmness and inventive spirit of an invincible nation. The resistance had obtained its power from the spirit of the truth of its nation. In the period from April 1992 to December 1995, the BH Army broke through many barricades and temptations on the historic main road. In only 44 months, the scattered and homegrown troops of patriots were made a mature army, which knows today how to achieve strategic results with operational planning and tactics while defending its country and freedom. The Dayton Agreement, which ended the war in Bosnia and Herzegovina, provided for an integrated army at the Federation level. That army has a modern structure with sophisticated armaments in accordance with the NATO alliance doctrine. The Federation Army has inherited the experience and qualities of the Bosnian War Army. With such an army, Bosniaks can, for the first time in history, plan their future without the fear of an aggression or genocide which have happened to all past generations at least once in their lifetime. 
dying through the history for the interests of others, Bosnians have for the first time fought for their own cause, for the survival of their nation and the freedom of their country. The Bosniak people will never present the target of neighboring oligarchies again. And Bosnia will never again be a prey to somebody's appetite. Thanks to their army, the Bosniaks are secure in this part of the world for the first time. The Bosnian soldier radiated freedom on his road, watering it with his own blood. The Bosnian army gave birth to thousands of heroes, and nine of them were officially confirmed that immortal honor. Safet Hajic, Mehdin Hojic Senat, Mithat Huidur Puika, Hairudin Mesic, Safet Zajko, Enver Shehovic, Adil Besic, Nesib Malkic, Izet Nanic. The names of these honorable Bosniaks are written on tombstones, but they will live among people forever as personal nouns for the best in the Bosnian nature. This country was built with thousands of accomplishments of its dead sons. With their nobleness, they rose to set an example to the future generations. They are not dead, though it may seem so to us. They are the witnesses of truth and justice, where we would have lost the ground without them, and the skies would have fallen on our heads. Therefore, let the everlasting light of mercy shine on them. Grown out of victims of a peaceful nation, the army of the BH Federation will always be the tool in service of the defense of this country and a society predicted to be built on the basis of the highest human rights standards. It has already become a factor worthy of respect where not a single comma cannot be removed or added within the constitution of this country without its approval or a little detail within a common country project based on equality of all peoples. <laughs>